So in the last video we talked about the preliminary reading and um, you know the gist of that first reading is just to get a vague idea of various concepts like the occasion of the letter, the purpose of the letter, uh, the overall message and flow of thought within the letter. But after doing just one reading, those you, you're not going to have a really solid grasp on anything. You're probably just going to have a vague idea. So now it's time to move on to something quite a bit more substantial. Now I'm going to model for you a pretty intense process and it's going to seem overwhelming to you, uh, the, especially the first time you do it. I'm going to rec I'm going to suggest that ideally you do want to do this every time you're studying, especially for something, uh, you know, if, if you're going to be teaching. You want to take time and go through the process as I'm going to describe it to you, even though it seems very overwhelming and, and almost too thorough. But uh, it is it is an important step. Now, if you choose not to do that uh, in your own studies, that's fine. But it's still a really important step to learn. And so I'm going to require that you do it for for the class, even if in your own personal studies you choose not to do it. Just because I really do feel that eventually you're going to need to know how to, how to do what I'm about to show you. Okay, so what is this terribly overwhelming process that I'm describing? Well, uh, at a certain point, you got to look very closely at all the information in the letter. And uh, because the, the wording is a little tricky or um, the flow of thought isn't as clear in the biblical letters, we have to really go all out and really try to uh, analyze it very carefully. So here's what I suggest. Uh, summarize the content the content of the of the letter you're studying into bullet points so what you what I mean by that is you go to verse 1 and you start reading and you read until you think the author has made his first point now in this case as we start reading uh, he says Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the commandment of God our Savior and of Jesus Christ who is our hope to Timothy now to Timothy seems to start a new section um, the first thought is Paul basically just introduces himself as the author. So I'm going to write Paul introduces himself as the author of the letter. I think we're summarizing here, so I don't think it's absolutely crucial that we include in here how he describes Jesus. I think at this point um, it is significant, but for for our summary, all we have to know is that Paul is introducing himself. And then, of course, in verse 2, Paul identifies his, his uh, intended reader. Good. And so you can kind of see what we're doing. We're just going uh, idea by idea and just summarizing it. Here's verses 3 and 4. Now, I think verses 3 and 4, both sentences make one solid idea. And Paul is reminding Timothy of his instruction not to allow uh, strange, strange doctrines to be taught at Ephesus. Uh, and then there's, there's another sub-point here, also not to pay attention to myths and genealogies. So I think I would write something like this. Paul reminds Timothy... Of his instructions and there's two sub points so I'm going to tab over so I can demonstrate that there's two um, sub points here the first one is not to allow men to teach strange doctrines that's in verse 3 and the second one nor to pay attention to myths I'm gonna leave out the rest there just so I can have a short statement so you see what I've done here? I've I've summarized the thought. Now there are two sub points under there, so I've I've demonstrated it there in my bullet points. And if we were, you know, carry on, we could keep doing this verse verse by verse until I've you know I've already done this over here, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. We get something like that for chapter one. Now, I, 
again, I know this seems really tedious, but I think it is really important to, to lay everything out there. Uh, it, it does a, a few things. Number one, it lets you look at the entire letter at once, and it also lets you see patterns in Paul's thought process. So um, let me demonstrate what I mean by that. Now, this is step one. You just put down in bullet list um, everything the author says. Step number two would be to find groups of thought within all this content. So for example, uh, there's a few verses down here where Paul talks about himself. Let's take a look here. Um, verse 12, Paul starts talking, uh, starts thanking God for using him in, his, in God's service. And that seems to go all the way to about verse 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that off into its own section so I can see it visually and I'm gonna title it something characteristic of that section I think here it's Paul thanks God for using him um, then if we looked at, you know at the first two verses I think that's also a different section and we can title that section something like uh, the address because really all that's happening there is Paul is identifying himself as the author and identifying Timothy as the recipient. Then we've got this section in here where Paul gives instructions about false teachers. So I'm going to summarize this as Paul reminds Timothy about his instructions concerning false doctrines or false teachers, whatever. Then we've got this little tidbit back here, and so we can say um, Paul seems to switch back to talking about encouraging Timothy to fight a good fight. Now essentially what we've done here, just by looking at the different sections, is we've started to outline the passage. We're starting to see the flow of thought. Um, here Paul is giving Timothy instructions about false teachers. Then he goes into um, thanking God for using him in his service. And then he goes back to, to uh, telling him to keep the good faith which some are rejecting. Now at this point you can kind of you know think about the flow of thought. It kind of seems like Paul thanking God for using him in the ministry seems out of place because Paul here tells Timothy to watch out for false teachers. It ends with him telling him to keep the faith which others rejected. But why does Paul start talking about how God used him in the service? Is he changing subjects for no reason at all or what's the flow of thought? So that, those are the kinds of questions that doing a kind of outline like this will start raising and it'll start revealing to you this idea of flow of thought why what is a passage or a section how is it impacting Paul's overall flow of thought 